Uh, name's Seamus Fox, I'm Head of Open Education, uh, in the, which is part of the National Institute of Digital Learning in Dublin City University. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Eamon Costler and myself will be able to present uh, the project on Enhancing Computer Interaction Design Education, which we have shortened to HEI Designed Ed. Um, uh, the field of HCI, uh, I would argue, is at the core, at the very core of living and learning today's digital world. Uh, arguably as well, I would say that the field has offers a huge potential to drive the enhancement of digital uh, capacity in Irish higher education and beyond that, beyond Irish higher education to uh, partnerships through industry. I'll be coming back to talk about that. But I hope you think that uh, what we think is a very exciting and ambitious, ambitious project, um, that you will co consider it very uh, worthwhile. But just before we do, I want to talk a little about our partnership. We are joined here with, with DCU, with UCC, uh, the Institute of Art, Design and Technology in Dunleary, and the Athlone Institute of Technology. Um, you can see the partners on the slide, and you can see that uh, Quite a number of them here with us today. Um, <clears throat> the, the funding call actually uh, emphasised, and I quote, that the, we should focus on teaching and learning enhancement with an academic department as the unit of change. We're fortunate in this things to have a number of leads. We have Professor John McCarthy from head of Department of Applied Psychology in UCC. Professor Mark Brown, Director of the National Institute of Digital Learning, Owen Langan, Head of Business Studies in AIT, and not last but not least, Dr. Marion Palmer, very well known in Ireland, who's the Head of Technology and Psychology in, um, <coughs> in Dun Laoghaire. Um, just before I go on, I think it's worth emphasising as well that uh, the, this proposal really aims to, to enhance the objectives of the uh, what we call the roadmap map document, that's uh, which Sarah <laughs> mentioned earlier, and a, it's the um, teaching and learning in Irish higher education, a roadmap for enhancement of the digital world. And obviously, I think like practically all the pro proposals here, we aim to strengthen the support collaboration within and between the institutions. But as you'll see, we have a very strong emphasis on developing strong evidence based for enhanced digital education. Um, the core of this partnership came together over 10 years ago when uh, Professor McCarthy and ourselves in open education uh, started working on uh, uh, re revising a number of human sciences modules within the BSc and IT and we were delivering it for doing it for online delivery and we started experimenting with a number of different uh, pedagogies and assessments that were appropriate to that uh, things, and we have worked on that over the years. Professor McCarthy has gone on to develop uh, the Department of Applied Psychology in UCC as one of the key centres for HCI in Ireland, and we have two of the key members of that, Dr. Conor Lennon, Dr. Uh, Nadia Patip, with us here today. Um, Latterly, what happened was that uh, Dave O'Hannon here, who has worked with both at UCC and in, uh, with ourselves at DCU has started working in both AIT and IADT on, uh, on their, um, uh, their HEI programs. And um, just to uh, <coughs> finish, uh, Dr. Marion MacDonald from um, uh, uh, IADT works on their MSc in user experience. So you can get a feel there for the, the range of expertise there is within this, uh, uh, in this, pro in this partnership. Um, and uh, just the, uh, before <laughs> I think I leave her out, my colleague Lorraine Delaney here works with us in open education, an expert in the area of digital learning. Okay, I think it's good if we just uh, talk about first our overall aim to inspire and foster innovation, creativity, and creatively thinking in students of HCI. We'll talk a lot about that later. But just before, and in line with a number of other previous presentations, I thought it might be interesting just to, just to say what exactly is human-computer interaction. And um, according to ACM, which I'm sure most of you know is the world's largest educational and scientific computing society, HCI is a discipline concerned with the design, 
evaluation implementation of interactive computer systems for human use and the study of major phenomenon surrounding them. That last piece is becoming even more important. But as you can see, it draws to classic multidisciplinary. It draws on psychology, computing, technology, increasingly on design and art, and as I referred to recent, just more recently, very much on social, organisational, cultural psychology. Um, I, just going back to the very first sentence I made, HCI is at the core of developments of ICT over the last decade. You're moving from it's technology designed by techies <laughs> to technology for users and putting the user experience right at the centre of the design of technology. Um, uh, I think you know the change is very obvious in things like smartphone and various social media, but I think we're just at the start. The changes we've seen in the last 10 years are going to be multiplied and quadrupled. Uh, in the next in the coming years. Just as, as we all know, technology is just becoming much more pervasive and ubiquitous, used in, not in the traditional settings, but also increasingly in, uh, of, in social settings with very different types of people, people with disabilities, aged, different cultures. And this is where the, uh, the real strengths of HCI will come, come through. Uh, within an Irish context, FORFAS, which is Ireland's you know, governmental policy you know, uh, on advisory body for enterprise and uh, science, has identified IC, uh, HCI as really one of the key areas for the um, knowledge society and has said that there's a huge need for HCI experts uh, in this critical area uh, for the development of the Irish economy. They see this as one of the real growth changers and as we move up the value chain. Given the increased importance of HCI, I think that it is obvious that there's a critical need for really highly uh, developed uh, HCI experts, competent and skilled in the area. As you'll see, a key te uh, of, of this project is to test, um, evaluate and validate even a number of ways of teaching HCI. It needs what what we've, a number of people already called signature technology te pedagogies for this area. Uh, it is, bec particularly because of its multidisciplinary nature, it needs a whole set of not just competences, but uh, uh, pedagogies to teach those competencies. And we'll be going into that in, in quite a bit of detail. Um, so while this project uh, builds on work carried out to date, uh, we will be we will be uh, enhancing and really enlarging those uh, uh, pedagogical scenarios that we've developed and uh, put them in across not just our various institutions but with different groups of students within, within those uh, institutions. I'm now going to ask, um, uh, oh yes, naturally, we'll be making these scenarios available to right across the sector and we have very specific plans about how to do that. I'll ask my colleague, uh, Dr. Coslow, to bring on to the next section. James, my name is Eamon Coslow. I'm uh, Program Director of our BSc in Information Technology at DCU. I'm going to talk to you about what we will do and how we will do it. So, um, we have a detailed work plan, which you have, uh, but I'm just going to zoom in here on the uh, main activities and, and their implementation. And uh, the main activities are what and the implementation details that they have. So I'm going to zoom in again. And our first, we have five work packages. And the first of those is the project establishment. We have an all partner kickoff meeting. We uh, contract an educational developer learning technologist to help us. We develop a project website, social media platform, and those, that would be one of the outputs of that work package. Uh, we appoint a student liaison to the, from each institution to the project, which would be important to get student feedback from the start, <coughs> and international and industry advisors uh, support as well. Uh, the second work package will be a review of best practice, so we get off on a good footing as to make sure we establish exactly 
what the best practice is in two related areas. One is in open textbooks. And we're going, how are we going to do that? We're going to engage with the HCI and open educational resources communities for, there is, there is an open HCI textbook in Latin America at the moment, for instance. Uh, we'll review websites, repositories, relevant literature, do a search of those. The second one is our review of the current state of the art of assessment in HCI, and we will do a synthesis of the literature by doing a systematic search of relevant databases with library support and with the support of research assistant and learning technologist educational developer. And the output of this work package will be a report that will be published and available to the sector. Um, work package three is assessment case studies, and this is a, a, key, a key activity that we're going to engage in. We're going to design, implement, and evaluate an assessment strategy for teaching HCI in each institution for presentation in the 2016-17 academic year. So you may be thinking, how are we going to do this? What is a case study? Um, what are we going to do? So we're going to draw on work package two on the, the best with the principles we've identified. And essentially, what that will allow us to do is benchmark our, our current practice against what's out there. We think what we're doing is good, but we want to test that and validate it. And we also want to do that with each other as well. So we want to do interinstitutional peer review of our assessments, which would be highly valuable to us. And this project will give us the opportunity to do that and really enhance what we're doing. So we will seek ethical approval, the logistics of this. And we'll have to have a timeline for peer reviewing our assessments before the release to students, hassle the peer reviewers to get their reviews back on time, and so on. Uh, and then we'll evaluate these assessments and iterate them. And we will do these case studies. It will be underpinned by an approach informed by pedagogical design patterns. And this comes from the design pattern work of Alexander. And basically, for those unfamiliar with it, its design pattern is one that occurs. It's a, a problem that occurs over and over. It's a simple and communicable solution to that problem that you can implement a million times, but never the same way twice. Um, and it's a good. Uh, methodology that you can use. It's not exclusive either. We had conversations, John was talking about, for instance, um, using a action research type methodology in his case study, and that's, that will fit with this case, uh, this implementation. But what we will do in this is we'll agree to format of the case studies at the start, uh, and we'll iterate these as we go along. And what kind of things are we talking about here? So say we may have a student in IADT who's a student of design. Uh, one of Marion's students, for instance, they may be designing a website using prototyping tools. And a prototyping tool can be just wireframing. It may not, it may not even involve technology. Um, and then you may have a student in UCC who is using one of John's students, and they're using a repertory grid to evaluate a user's experience of, of a website. And that's a tool, a well-tested tool in psychology for evaluating uh, people's representing mental models of use of a website. Then our own students, my colleague Lorraine, we have students that are learning online and they're doing something similar. They come from an IT background and they are evaluating websites and they're keeping a diary of their evaluations in a Google Doc. And then they uh, use this website over time. They build up these diaries. They peer critique each other's diaries, then they, instead of, they write a group report and they submit that. And they do a lot of this in online discussion forums. And it requires a lot of planning to get these things right. And um, the genesis of a lot of this project is us sitting in an office in DCU, several members of the project, and having these kind of design conversations about how many students you put in a group, how did that work, and so on. And once you crack that, once you come up with those things, that's your design pattern. And you synthesize that. And, write it down really well over and over till you get it right and you share that with somebody else. That's the basis of it. And this will allow us to do this on a, on a bigger scale and so on. Uh, so the open textbook is the next major thing we will do. We develop a prototype of an open textbook. Um, we will select a platform, create repurposed content. We believe that this is a, a significant offering to the sector because um, OER used as a checkered history, but open textbook could have a real impact, and it's called for in the digital roadmap is to use of open educational practices. We'll disseminate and evaluate the project. The key outcomes, 
an enrichment of an existing community and, and a spreading of that community. This project would allow us to do that. Raise awareness of best practice, enhance resources for teachers, enhance scenarios for learners. And I, Ireland is a leader in HCI design education. We have a validated impact evaluation framework that we're adopting that's in use by the Australian Institute of uh, Officer Teaching and Learning. It evaluates impact on staff, learners, providers, wider outreach. And if I have one minute to finish, uh, what does the future hold? So this book just came out a couple of weeks ago, designed for voice interfaces. Um, it's not new. You can control computers by voice. It's a niche application. The blind, visually impaired people rely on this. It's critical. But nowadays, you can search. My kid searches for how to draw videos of dinosaurs. OK, Google. It gives back the, the text, not doesn't speak back to you, which is a, a design fail for him because he's five and can't read very well yet. But is this what we teach our students? What we're going to do is we can't guess the future. We want to give our students the tools, the general tools, the pedagogical techniques to f inspire their creativity, their innovation, and their problem solving to help design the products that will shape the future. Thank you.